Thank you so much for the introduction and that lovely video. Thanks, Nancy, for making it. She told me she was making that video for me. That was super nice. Thanks all of you guys who are here right now. So I'm not talking to myself. That's always nice to have people show up. I've been looking forward to this. Um, one of the things I love most is giving back to the public and sharing free information and encouraging and educating and inspiring people. So I'm excited to be here. And uh, whether you're somebody who's sick and trying to get healthy, or maybe you're overweight and want to get thin, or maybe you're someone who's a helper in the health world that's trying to learn more techniques to help people, or maybe you're a conference nerd like me and you just like coming to conferences and learning stuff. But whatever the reason, you're in the right place and I hope we have a great time together. So thanks for being here. Um, for those of you who don't know me well, I'd like to start out by just telling you a little bit about myself and why I do this thing that I do. Um, of course, I, you just heard this whole big intro, so I am a board-certified medical doctor and a best-selling author and all of those things. But you know, before I had the white coat or anybody knew my name, I was a patient, and maybe some of you are too. I was a patient pretty young. I started getting medical problems around 12 years old. I started getting migraines, and these were really serious migraines. I would be in bed throwing up for days. Uh, we had all the testing done. They gave me the MRIs and the EEGs and couldn't figure out any trigger for them. And so all they could do was give me something for pain, which was a relief to have something for pain, but it didn't change how often I got them. And so I learned to live with that, even at that age. And then when I hit 16, I started having other problems. I started having uh, arthritis where I would have pain that would start to move throughout my joints. It could be in one knee and then the next day, the other knee or one shoulder and the other shoulder. And it was extremely painful, but weird, you know, at least weird as a kid to understand how could I have a pain so bad in this shoulder that I can't lift my fork, but then the next day it's gone, but it's in this shoulder. It sounded too strange to even try to share with my mom, but I, I did mention I was having pains and we went to the doctor and she gave me something for pain. And so that continued on and I started developing more and more unusual things. Uh, I started, yeah, I continued with the migraines. I have continued with the joint pains and then I started getting rashes. I got a rash across my face, uh, which we now know to be a butterfly rash called that because it, the wings go over your cheeks and then the bridge goes over your nose, the, the caterpillars, the nose. And that would have happened, especially when I was exposed to a lot of sun. So one day, my best friend came over and we spent the whole day at the pool. And when we came back, I had a horrible migraine and I was vomiting. And when I came out of the bathroom from vomiting, my rash was really bright red over my face. And my parents took a look at me and went, all right, something's really wrong here. So they called my doctor and she said to meet her at the ER. And at that moment, when she saw all of it together, finally clicked what I had. And she told my family she thought I had lupus. Now that really made my mom angry. She told me recently, my mom said she was mad. She said, I've been taking you into the doctor all this time, trying to figure things out. And then we walk in there and she just says, you have lupus. No, of course you don't have lupus. <laughs> but, uh, but it was really, I mean, it's a horrible diagnosis to get. Lupus is an autoimmune disease where your own immune system, which is supposed to attack things like viruses and bacteria, starts attacking your own organs. So it's a very dangerous and difficult disease and it can be a deadly one. Well, they did the blood test, they confirmed I did have lupus, but what they also found out was silently, unbeknownst to me, my kidneys were also failing. One of the things that lupus can do is it can attack your organs and it's very common to have kidney failure, although it can also attack your heart, your lungs, your brain and other areas. So when they did the test, my kidney function was really, really low. Um, my blood pressure was through the roof. The next day they scheduled a kidney biopsy for me and then the following day after that, I'm sitting in the nephrologist office with my mother and my grandmother, listening to this nephrologist give me this diagnosis. And, you know, I come from a family of immigrants. I'm first generation born in America. Um, my mom was five years old when she came over on a boat through Ellis Island with my grandparents, who were Holocaust survivors, refugees who wanted to restart after the war and start a new life here in freedom. And so here I was first generation, I'm an only child. Uh, and so I was going to live the American dream and have all the things that they couldn't have. I mean, they came to this country not even speaking English, having no work. They were working in factories with their hands, uh, trying to just create something new here. And I was going to live that American dream. And now I'm really, really sick. And the nephrologist says that I have the most aggressive form of lupus nephritis, lupus induced kidney failure. 
And he said it was called membrano proliferative. Can't say that three times fast, uh, which is the most aggressive form. And I was in stage four kidney failure. And when my family asked what that meant, he said, it means that at most she's got six months before her kidneys fail. And my mom said, what does that mean? And he said, well, uh, if she lives, it means dialysis, but she might not make it. So here I am at 16, sitting with my mother and my grandmother, hearing this news that, no, I don't just have some weird joint pains and headaches. I'm dying. And uh, that was a really, uh, as, as difficult as it was for me to hear it, it was more difficult to see the impact of my family. And one of the things I really teach my clients and the people I work with is that you don't get sick by yourself. Illness is something that happens to everyone who loves you at the same time. And my grandmother, I never saw her cry. She is tough, tough stock. I mean, she's a Holocaust survivor who also graduated feeling lucky and determined to live the best life possible to let go of the past and embrace happiness. She's an incredible person. Actually, it's the anniversary of her death is coming up next week. Uh, she lived till 99. But she, uh, she, I'd never saw her cry before that day. That day we came home from the hospital and uh, she was on her knees crying, begging God to take her life to spare mine. And to this day, it's burned into my mind, that image that I, I still see it. Um, now I'm gonna give away the ending and let you know I made it, <laughs> but it was difficult. And when we asked the doctor what we could do, there weren't clear answers. Uh, back when I was 16, we didn't have all the fancy new medicines we have now. And, you know, it's sound old back in my day, but we didn't, we didn't have Plaquenil and Celsept and all the different medicines they use now. There was steroids, prednisone. And what they were using at the time was, uh, what my, my nephrologist told me that that entryway to get us revved up was to tell us there was an experimental new treatment I could try that involved using chemotherapy to shut down the immune system to try to save the kidneys. And so if you've ever known somebody who has uh, cancer, who needed chemotherapy, you might've heard that they are much more sensitive to infection. And in fact, people with cancer often die of infections. And the reason is that a side effect of chemotherapy is it shuts down the immune system. So they thought, what if we do it on purpose? What if we give high doses of chemotherapy to someone with lupus nephritis and see if we can reboot the immune system. What if we shut it off with high dose of chemo and then let it reboot and see if the lupus is quieter? And it was excruciating. Okay. So from 16 to 18, I took seven different kinds of medicines, super high dose steroids. Plus in addition to that, all the medicines that had to protect me from the steroids and the chemo. And I took chemotherapy on top of that. They were giving me high doses of hormone suppression because chemotherapy could cause ovarian cancer. They were trying to suppress puberty to try to save some of my eggs that could be destroyed by the chemo. It was, it's a lot. And some of you might be sick and know that it's a lot. Um, but I was raised in an immigrant family where you do what your doctor says. And that's what we did. And I was also raised in a family of trauma resilience because, as I said, my grandparents are Holocaust survivors, and yet they didn't carry trauma with them into our relationships. They taught me that we are lucky and that we can choose in any moment to embrace what's good and our happiness and how lucky we are, rather than looking at the pain of what happened before. So I was very focused on that and have always felt very lucky. I mean, any of my family that died or suffered in the Holocaust would have traded for lupus any day to live at home with their family, with doctors and getting to go to school. So I still felt very lucky. And my mother is also very focused on keeping me from embracing the idea of disease or my own demise and staying focused on who I was and what I wanted to be. And so even though I was in all AP classes and getting chemotherapy, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> you know, it was okay. You have a test on Monday, but you have chemo on Fridays. So when are you going to study for that test so that you can, you know, make sure you keep up your straight A average uh, while getting all your medical stuff done. And so she was amazing. She kept me focused. And even though I could hear her crying sometimes in her room, she was very, tough and strong for me. And so I graduated at the top of my class and I got a scholarship to my dream college, Carnegie Mellon, the nerd school that I always wanted to go to. And my last chemotherapy was 
one week before my first day of college. So I did it. And the greatest news was after two full years of chemo, they tried to stop, but the lupus kept rebounding. After two years of chemotherapy, finally, they said I was in remission. Now remission, when it comes to autoimmune disease, does not mean that you don't have a disease anymore. In fact, you very much have a disease. What it means is not you, you're not currently dying from the disease, which was absolutely true. You took a blood test, there was lupus antibodies, positive ANA. I had messed up complement levels, all these things that if those of you who track autoimmune would know what I'm talking about. There was protein in my urine because it was damaged to my kidney. So normally protein is too large a molecule to get into the urine, but if there's damage to your kidney, it can. So I was told I would always have protein in my urine because of the damage that was done. Okay, fine. As long as I'm not currently dying and the kidneys are stable, hallelujah, let's go to college. And so that's what I did. And I was really, really excited. And I went to college. But I had, I think I was blessed by lupus in many ways, one, just because of what I get to do today, but two, because of the perspective that it gave me, you know, being told that you're going to die or possibly could die at 16, it could affect you in multiple ways. You could become hopeless and why even try, why even live, or you can become like me. I am very, very proactive at trying to juice everything I can out of life. I show up and I, you know I'm in the room. I'm ready. I want to laugh. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to learn. I want to just get everything I can at every moment. So I showed up at college hungry for knowledge and excitement and connection and love and all the things I was going to do. And I had a blast at college. I absolutely loved it. And in my college, you weren't supposed to be able to start doing genetic research until you were a junior. And the summer after my freshman year, I just kept going to the labs asking if I could do genetic research. And they kept saying no, but I just wouldn't stop showing up. And so finally, one of the scientists allowed me into his lab and I started doing genetic research uh, that summer leading into my sophomore year. And I got to have three full years of genetic research uh, under my belt by the time I graduated, got to publish and learn so much about cells and genetics. And the information that I learned then has also contributed to my ability to create the protocols that I have rather than kind of general ideas about health. So all of this really helped me, but I really just got as much as I could. And I was doing well, I maintained my remission through college, and then I decided to go to medical school. Now, one of the things with autoimmune disease is we are told to get enough rest and avoid stress. Uh, that is very difficult to do in medical school. And I learned that quickly. And I actually ended up getting sick again. My junior year of medical school, I figured out I'd been working 100 hour weeks. Uh, there were days where I would go to the hospital and come home. I'd get up at three to go and pre round in the hospital, get home and pass out during Jeopardy at seven. And sometimes I would wake up and just change my scrubs and go right back in. I mean, it was really, really difficult. And at one point I realized that I was uh, having a problem. I started getting double vision where I would go to uh, the hospital and I'd be doing rounds. And then suddenly the whole world would split into two and I'd have to hold on to a wall and just wait for everything to come back together again. And I would kind of hear like a buzzing sound and I just stand there. And then when I opened my eyes and the world was single again, I just continue on my rounds and seeing patients. But I knew I had a problem and I went to, a lot happened. Uh, I ended up collapsing when the clinics uh, one day. People thought I was a med student, just passed out on a chart, uh, but I was gone. Um, right before that happened, I remember that the intern was talking to me and I wanted to answer, but I couldn't really talk. Everything felt weird, sounded weird, and I couldn't really say anything. And I fell asleep. And when I woke up, the clinic was already emptied out. Uh, I was left there to rest and finish charting, I guess. And uh, I was very, very, very confused. I remember all I could think about was I wanted to go home. And I picked up my keys and I got into my Jeep. And thankfully, I lived only a couple of blocks from the clinic, but I actually couldn't remember where I lived. And I was stopping on each street, looking back and forth, trying to figure out, was it my street yet? Um, but I, I ended up getting home. And when I woke up after a few hours of being passed out, I felt like I might be normal again, but I wasn't. Uh, I went to my doctors and they ran all the tests and it turned out that lupus had created a new antibody. And instead of attacking my kidneys, it was now attacking uh, my body in a new way, creating antiphospholipid or antibodies that cause blood clots. So I was actually having mini strokes. Um, now I'm very lucky 
uh, always, uh, that it wasn't a major stroke, that many strokes, the blood clots will dissolve again, and you can kind of return to normal without permanent damage. But it was terrifying. And at that point, I was also a doctor, and I understood what I had. You know, when I was 16, there was no internet. Can you believe that? <laughs> there was no internet. Uh, there was no email. There was no Google. And so I really didn't have any way of, the only way I could learn about what I have was with a book. My mom gave me a book. I started reading it and thought it was way too depressing and got rid of it. So I was able to just focus on life. But as a medical student, I knew exactly what I had. And when I got the blood clots and had to sit with my doctor and talk about how, you know, the disease was progressing, that I was definitely staring down a shorter lifespan than most, um, that I was facing disability at some point, probably by my 40s. And that I wouldn't be able to have children because between the lupus, the kidney failure and the blood clots, I wouldn't survive. So that was really hard. And I got to say, I had about two weeks of feeling really sad about that, which for me is a long time to be down. Uh, but I leaned on my friends and I talked about it. And I finally came back to the way I usually feel was I'm lucky because we caught it. And there's something I can do. They told me if I inject myself with blood thinners in my belly or my butt every day for the rest of my life, I won't have a major stroke. Now, if I fall and hit my head, I can bleed out and have a stroke, which is scary for a clumsy person. But um, there was something I could do and I wasn't dead. And I just gotten my first choice of residency at UCLA in California, UCLA Harbor. And I was excited about life again. And I said, you know what? Nobody knows how long they have. Nobody does, but how many people out there get to live their dream and I'm living it. I'm about to be officially a doctor and I'm gonna have my first choice of residency. I can be a doctor in a wheelchair if I become disabled, it's gonna be all right. And I just kept going. And I came back to this place of excitement and gratitude. And so I really did finish. Let me, I'm gonna show, share my screen. Um, I did graduate, of course. And here's my family here. And uh, my grandmother that I was talking to you about, this is her right here. Uh, she, like I said, she lived in 99 and she had always hoped she would get to see me graduate from med school and she did. Um, and she lived long enough to see me do a lot more. Um, that's my dad, he's six foot seven. That's why he's even bigger than me with that hat on. And you can see even in the picture, um, I have that swollen face that you get from steroids. Um, we get real round faces and big chipmunk cheeks, um, but I did it. I, I graduated and it was really exciting. Um, but the most exciting thing that happened after that, right around the time that I'd gotten into my residency, was that I fell in love. And that really changed the whole trajectory of my life. That's my husband, Thomas Tadlock. At the time, he was my boyfriend. <laughs> and we fell in love really quickly. And I got to say, I, as a scientist, I never really believed in the idea of soulmates uh, until I met this man. <laughs> And uh, we fell in love extremely quickly. And it was only about a month in where we were talking about marriage. And I had to really sit down and talk to him and tell him that, you know, I have a disease where I'm not going to live a long life and you're going to have to take care of me when I become disabled. And I can't have your children. Uh, and it's, it's a very difficult conversation to have with the most beautiful, amazing person you've ever met that you want to grow, well, grow as old as you can with, that you want to live your life with. And he just looked at me and took my hands and said, I'd rather live a short life with you than a lifetime with anybody else. So we'll just make it the best darn life you could ever have. And I went, yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, so what happened was my husband is actually, he's, he's a best-selling author himself. His book is called Miracle Metabolism. Now, at the time, he was a mad scientist trying to discover the key to metabolism. What he... Um, understood that I think is missing from the medical world, I know is missing from the medical world and the fitness world, is that with, there must be an ideal diet for humans for, their, for them to have a fast metabolism, to lose weight easily, to gain muscle easily. And it made no sense to him that when he was getting his master's degree in exercise science and health promotion, that they were saying, well, some people do low carb and some do high carb and some do high protein and some do low fat and some do high fat. And he's going, where's the science? This is not science, right? If there is an ideal diet for a cat and there's an ideal diet for a giraffe, there's an ideal diet for a human. We are not so diverse. We are cellularly the same. And so we have just lost our way and we don't know what our ideal diet is anymore. But the idea that his professors didn't know either and tried to blow it off as uh, different strokes for different folks, 
That is just not the case. Biodiversity in humans is not a real thing when it comes to our diets. We are all the same species. We have the same cellular mechanisms. We have the same organelles, the same enzymes. We have the same cellular requirements. So that was his fascination. And he had developed a protocol already that was already catapulting him into fame for rapid fat loss. So he was getting called by MTV, which it was cool back then. I don't know anymore. I'm so out of touch in my 40s. Like so that's a thing anymore. But at the time, uh, they were calling him in to get people a six pack in three, four weeks because, you know, they needed to make a music video and they were drinking too much beer and he could do it. So when we decided to get married, I asked him if he would train me because I wanted to look like a movie star in my wedding dress. And so he changed my diet for me. Now I had been a, a vegetarian since I was 13, but I ate eggs and cheese every meal, lots of processed foods, lots of oils. And so my diet was very unhealthy and I thought it was healthy, but it was very unhealthy. So he told me, listen, we have to get rid of all the saturated fat. So all the eggs and the cheese and the dairy, all that stuff's got to go. Um, and we he put me on super high amounts of raw vegetables. And I'm going to teach you the protocol that we use. Um, but he also included meat at the time because at, he hadn't gotten to the stage of his research yet, understanding about how we don't need meat for protein. And he thought we did. So he would tell people to eat very high quality, free range, kind of like what paleo is now, but many years before paleo became a thing. I refused to eat the meat because I'd been vegetarian uh, and I had to give up all my cheese and eggs and everything. I mean, he did suggest I could eat egg whites, but that was disgusting. So I just gave him up. And so what happened was, uh, first of all, it worked and I lost over 20 pounds. I went from uh, here's me before I was about a size 11 uh, and I went from a size 11 to a size three in about three and a half months. This is us. Uh, the weekend before we got married, we, were, we got married in Maui. We eloped with just our best friends and our fa a closest family. And um, he looked good, too. I know. Uh, but this was us a few days before we got married in Hawaii. But even more exciting than the results for our fitness was that here I was as an intern working 30 hour shifts multiple days a week. Uh, working 80 hours a week, they'd finally made a law that you couldn't work uh, more than 80 hours a week yet. But weren't, we didn't really say anything if we did, if you know what I mean. Um, but uh, I was working extremely long. I was a new doctor with high levels of stress because when you just graduate med school and then you see sick people and it's suddenly up to you to fix them, it's pretty stressful. Um, and so here I was working the most I ever worked with the highest level of stress ever. And I had tons of energy. I had no joint pain. I had no migraines. I felt incredible. And even more exciting than that was when we went to the hospital to get my labs drawn right before our wedding, all the labs were negative for lupus. Now, at the time, I had been sick with lupus for 12 years, a dozen years while I had had positive labs for lupus and symptoms, um, my ANA, DSDNA, all the different antibodies, complement levels, plus my high cholesterol that I was told was just genetic and had nothing to do with all the cheese I ate. Um, I had antibodies that caused blood clots. All of those things were negative. And my doctor was very confused because he had my chart from when I used to live in Pennsylvania. And so he thought it was a lab mistake. And he said, go get married and come back and we'll recheck. And when we rechecked it, they were even better than before. My cholesterol was 150. All my markers were completely negative and they were stumped. Uh, so I finally, I kept taking my blood thinners for a year after my net markers were negative because I, my doctor told me I was treating his anxiety because he was terrified that I would have a stroke. After a year, I finally stopped that. I was off all medications. And so that was 16 years ago. And I have never had a relapse from a lupus in 16 years. Um, I also have no protein in my urine ever since that time. Uh, in spite of having had kidney failure 12 years prior, I had a full recovery in my kidney function as well. Now we rode this for a while. I, I didn't really understand that I was well. And I, I think that's something that's really important to point out is a lot of times people are upset that their doctors don't recognize how much better they are after changing their diet. I was a doctor and I didn't recognize that I was healed. <laughs> I just, I, I was trained in Western medicine. I'd been sick since I was a child. I just assumed it was a remission, even though it was a remission unlike any I've ever seen where I had no blood markers or symptoms. Because even in remission before, I still required medicines for pain. You know, I still required some medication. So we didn't know what to do with it. So we just enjoyed it. And I kept going to the doctor until I was fired a year later by my rheumatologist because he said he couldn't find anything wrong with me. A few years after that, I decided that I had been healthy for so long. I wanted to do something I was told was impossible. Um, 
that was us at our wedding day. And here's the impossible becoming possible. Um, took a lot of convincing from my husband because I had told him that it would kill me. But that was the me that had, you know, blood clot antibodies and blood clots and kidney failure, not the me that had been healthy for four years. So I finally convinced him and uh, got pregnant, scared the bejesus out of my OBGYN who went, you can't use to have lupus. You have lupus. Oh, my God, you're a high risk pregnancy. And she sent me to the high risk gynecologist who refused to follow me because I was too healthy, sent me back to her. So she just obsessively saw me really often, constant ultrasounds, constant blood tests. And it went really well. I had, they, they were predicting I was going to get sick, pregnant. It didn't happen. Then they said that the lupus was going to come back after birth. Well, I had to have a C-section because my son was breech. He was butt first, which I always joke. If you knew him, you'd understand. Um, but he was born breech. And so I had to have a C-section. And in spite of that, um, he went really well, by the way, let me, I brought this on for you to see. So they wanted to medicate me when I was pregnant, but uh, I refused because there was no signs or symptoms of lupus. Some people choose to do it anyway. Uh, but for me here, I was in 2004, right before I changed my diet. And I still had positive markers for blood clots. I had positive DSDNA antibodies. And here's me pregnant with no blood clot antibodies, right? And then here's me in 2004 with a positive ANA, but then here's me pregnant with a negative ANA. So it didn't make any sense to me why I should be taking meds if I had no lupus. Um, I am actually not anti-medicine, by the way. I am still a Western doctor, and I think they can be life-saving. Um, but at the time, I didn't feel that I needed my life to be saved. So he was born perfect, and I had no issues. And really exciting was when I got home, it was my birthday nine days later. And nine days later, I was able to put on my pre-pregnancy clothes like it never happened, which at the time, my husband had the high, the uh, largest boot camps, uh, fitness boot camps in Orange County, California. He did a full photo shoot because he said, this is going to be good for business. Oh, my God, because he had women in his boot camps that were trying to lose baby weight whose kids were in college, you know. So we realized at this point that we had come across something extraordinary, that metabolism was not just about my ability to lose weight or maintain a low body weight, which I was able to do. Obviously, if I lost my baby weight, you know, I'd gained 40 pounds and it was gone in nine days doing nothing but nursing and laying around. Obviously, I had a fast metabolism that allowed my body to lose weight easily. But for the first time, we realized that maybe metabolism is not just about how quickly you can lose body fat, but maybe it's about how quickly your body can repair itself and return to baseline or adapt to new circumstances that I could be pregnant and then be done being pregnant. And my body just snaps back to the way it was before that I could heal from lupus, that I could heal my kidneys. And so we then dove into the research as we really wanted to understand what happened. Is it reproducible? And if so, how do we help others like us? Well, we did go ahead and have one more kid. Um, uh, this is me two days before giving birth. Uh, I was told that I'm the happiest pregnant person. I even smile when I'm puking because I'm throwing up from pregnancy, not from chemo, you know? So, <laughs> uh, I'm always, I'm always smiling. So that's me two days before giving birth. And, uh, this, this is a photo shoot from Halloween. Uh, this is my silly family, my Solomon, who is now, he is also a, a bookseller. He came out with his own book, 50 comebacks for vegan kids, five stars on Amazon. Uh, he just turned 13 and there's Alex. He's nine. And, uh, always fun to put a wig on the ball guy. There's Thomas and me just having fun on Halloween. Um, so I'm so grateful for my family and the word's gotten out. I mean, we really, what we decided to do was we're going to continue to test things to make sure that what we do is reproducible before we ever bring it to the public. So that's what we did. We tested it. And only when we realized that we had something that could be reproducible and help every person who doesn't get those results, that's when we brought it to the public. And I think that's really important you know, a lot of times I'll see people who are teaching something just based off personal experience, but it's not based off of, you know, making sure that they understood what happened to them. And I don't consider that to be ethical, especially as a scientist and as a former patient. I don't find it to be ethical to say, I had this and I'm better, so do what I did without really being able to confirm that it's reproducible and that it's scientific. You know, there have been people who've suggested, maybe you got better because of love. Um, that would make it harder for me to share because I, there's only so much Tom can do to get around and, and, and <laughs> people love him. But, um, 
I was sick and in love for six months before I changed my diet, right? And so when we tried it for free and we tested it out, I gave talks at the Lupus Foundation and people volunteered. And when people stuck with the program, they got the results. And that's when we knew we really had to bring it to the public. And so I've been really, really excited that over the years, I have been able to help people thousands of people all over the world with recovery, not just from lupus, but with so many illnesses, it is entirely reproducible. For example, you might've seen this video recently from a lady named Julie, who, um, and people, when they make videos, it makes me so happy. She had mixed connective tissue disease. And she was one of those people that was a researcher. I saw in that little sales video about the conference, they were talking about, are you going to be a researcher? What are you going to do? Well, she tried that. And so she did every protocol she could find, you know, from like autoimmune pa protocol and paleo protocol and other different kinds of like psychic protocols and all different kinds of protocols. She tried everything she could and nothing progressed her. And a lot of these people would tell her it takes a year before it works. And she would give it a year. I don't have that kind of patience being from New York, <laughs> but you know, and nothing. And so uh, she did my four week rapid recovery program. So Rapid Recovery is a program I developed where you uh, do pure hypernourishment, which I'm going to teach about in a little bit, um, only the foods that are going to be uh, specific for cellular repair and optimal immune function. And you do that um, with checking in with me every single day, uh, either for four weeks individually, like she did, or six weeks in a group format. And I oversee your life during that time period. If you ever thought you needed a Jewish mother in your life to say, what did you eat? And how did you sleep? And how are you feeling? Do you have good boundaries? What's going on? Um, that would be me. <laughs> and what I do is I oversee every aspect of what you're doing to make sure it works. Because as that little intro video that Nancy made shows, um, Autoimmune disease is affected not only by diet, but by emotional health and stress and anxiety and other factors that can contribute to the problem. So I'm able to oversee all those things and help. Well, Julie needed help with all of those things. And she was so sick that she was barely able to care for her two little boys. She was just no energy, constant pain, really high level exhaustion, um, and had given up on everything she wanted to do. She stopped working and was home and just trying to get through her day. Well, at the end of the four weeks, she had enormous, she was finally getting breakthroughs in her energy. She was feeling really good. Aches and pains were gone. And she's like, oh my God, I think I can work again. And she started doing some part-time work. Well, when she checked in to make this video, she had, she told me she had Dr. G energy now, and she had started a coaching business you know, she helps married couples and businesses and she's, and her kids are chasing after her. And she also, in addition to having symptoms of different autoimmune diseases, which is what mixed connective tissue disease, it means you got a little bit like the Chinese menu, you know, like a sample of from something from A, something from B, something from C. Well, she had some symptoms that could be lupus, Sjogren, scleroderma, nothing specific enough, but she also had um, Hashimoto's thyroid issues. Well, after making this video, she recently uh, sent me this, um, which showed that her thyroid issue had healed itself. And Hashimoto's is a very common thyroid disease that people think is incurable, but it's not the case. It is, it is reversible uh, if you take action and if you have enough inflamed kidney or kidney, I'm sorry, if you have enough inflamed uh, thyroid left to heal, you can get function back, which she did. And the best thing was she sent me this text. My doctor, didn't you used to be hypothyroid? <laughs> So I give my cell phone number to everybody that I work with so that I can personally stay in touch with them and stay on top of what's going on with them. And one of the best things about that is getting text messages like this. Uh, this is someone named Maria um, who she went to my free classes, which I have classes that are online at my website, goodbylupus.com, which I'll show you about that later so you can get more free info. She followed my free info. And she eliminated Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroid. Her new results showed a drastic reduction in the antibodies and her thyroglobulin antibodies are normal range. And thank you so much. Uh, so both types of uh, autoimmune diseases that affect the thyroid. Um, this is someone named David, who I always like to share because he was my first uh, client that I saw through telemedicine back when I decided to start making this my primary focus. And his mother pushed me into that. She saw me give a talk about mental health and nutrition. And she said that she'd been praying for me to help her David. Now, David had lupus, Sjogren's and scleroderma since he was a young teen. He'd been in the ICU for four months at a time. You can see that the skin condition had gotten so severe and look how swollen his lips are, his nose, his eyes. You can see he had depression. I mean, just look at his eyes. Um, and 
he was extremely lonely because he said when he went out in the world, nobody would look at him. Nobody would look him in the eye. And uh, it was extremely sad for him because he wanted to work and be a part of the world, but nobody um, wanted to give him any, any work or anything because uh, they couldn't look at him. Uh, this is him on medication, doing the best medication can do. And this is him after doing my nutrition protocol and reversing his disease. Um, he also had scleroderma that ripped open. So scleroderma hardens the skin so that when you bend your knuckle, it can break open and you can get infections in your joint. I know that's hard to look at, but it's really severe. His doctor told him before he met me, the only thing he could do is amputate his fingers. That's what the plan was to amputate his fingers. But then after doing my protocol, his fingers healed completely. And, uh, he, got a job within two months of working with me. And he started creating artwork with those same fingers. Here's, here he is going to work. And this is his 3D artwork. He actually won a competition in LA art shows, Los Angeles, um, with the beautiful art he makes with those fingers he can now use. And that's really what I think of as my purpose is to help other people live theirs. That's what I see is that it's not about skin and joints and diseases and blood tests. It's about a person living the life they were born to live like he's doing now. And that's him at work. They gave him carrots for his birthday because they call him the rabbit. Um, this is, uh, I get a lot of medical professionals who come to me. It turns out doctors, nurses, and pharmaceutical researchers and pharmaceutical salesmen don't actually like to take medications. Um, and they start doing their own internet research when they need to. So as a nurse, Peggy knew very much about uh, what autoimmune diseases were. And you can see, look at her when she came to me. She did my six week rapid recovery group. So she had my oversight every day for six weeks. And this is what her wrists look like when she started the group. Look at that, how swollen that is and how painful it is. She couldn't bend it at all. And at the end of six weeks, that's her in our live meeting at the end of six weeks, showing that she has her range of motion back fully in her joint. Isn't that cool? When you take care of your body properly, it wants to repair itself. On a cellular level, we're programmed to repair ourselves, but you have to give your body what it needs and you have to stop hurting it at the same time. Um, this is Jackie. She was in my six week rapid recovery group, got rid of antiphospholipid antibody as well, which is a blood clot antibody and reversed her ANA in six weeks, which is the lupus antibody. Um, this was a, a case series I published in reversing lupus nephritis, getting one woman off the transplant list, list in six weeks. She doubled her kidney function and got off the transplant list, even though her nephrologist said nothing could be done and changing your diet is pointless. She did it anyway. And interestingly enough, when she got off the transplant list, he said, I don't know how it happened, but I don't think it was the diet. You know, he suddenly started believing in miracles, I guess. Um, these are people who go to my free classes. This is one that was sent to me from someone who went to my free classes. Medications were not working on her discoid lupus. This is lupus in the skin, but just using my protocol alone, my nutrition protocol, she was able to do that in three weeks. Um, this is Mariana, who also did my six-week rapid recovery group for lupus in her brain that was causing her to have multiple seizures a day. The seizure stopped within a few days, and she was able to uh, lower her DSDNA antibodies from over 3,000 to 80 uh, during the course of the group. So those antibodies just died off, and she got her life back as well. She had she used to travel with her boyfriend. She had to go home and live with her parents, and it just broke her heart, and she went back out there and lived her life. Um Molly Ann was someone who did my six week rapid recovery group. Now she'd been six since she was a teenager. She's born the same year as me. So she's 45 and she went to her eye doctor after the group and her eye inflammation she'd had for nine and a half years from dermatomyositis was gone. And I heal very quickly. We've helped people with all sorts of different uh, inflammatory eye diseases gone. Um, I'd last seen her in February. She couldn't believe it. My eyes were normal. Second, my liver enzymes also elevated for nine and a half years. Also normal, incredible last drawn a month ago and they were trending down and now they're normal. Now, when she went to see her doctors, her doctors have been following her, like I said, since she was a teenager. Oh, I got a message from her right afterwards. She went to see her doctor uh, who'd been taking care of her since she was 18. He said the GI doctor emailed him, emailed her um, and she was astounded. Then they checked my son's labs and his own DSDNA and thyroid antibodies were negative. Her son also had autoimmune disease, which healed with him following along with her in the group. And they invited me to speak at a grand rounds at the hospital, which I said I would do when COVID died down a bit so soon. Um, so this is really exciting, right? Is that doctors who have been treating her for almost 30 years saw a change in six weeks that they couldn't see in 30 years. And they were excited about it and invited me to come do a grand round. So that's the best is when I get to share with doctors. 
as a teacher who told that she'd never be able to uh, walk on her own again, who after six weeks sent me a video of her doing just that. Um, Jackie's a recent graduate of my group who had rheumatoid arthritis and mixed connective tissue disease. She could, she's showing here how she can make a fist. She couldn't make a fist when the group started. Um, and at the end, this is her in the final meeting showing off that she can hold a pen, no more hand pain, first time she could make a fist in two years. She had so much strength in her hands, she was moving furniture around, uh, no more mouth sores. She had a bullis, a blistering disease uh, that made it so she couldn't wear uh, sneakers for two years. She was wearing sneakers again. Um, and she just posted this online that I had to share. She went to her doctor and they are taking her off of her medications now. They told her that she is lupus free. How cool is that? Another blessing from me having lupus. Um, another doctor who saw me who had a mystery autoimmune disease, nobody could figure out what was wrong with her, but she couldn't walk without steroids. And she prescribed herself the steroids because nobody believed she was sick. And she really learned a, a humble lesson about what patients go through when you go to your doctor and you look too good, but you hurt and they can't figure out what's wrong. So they just tell you you're fine. Uh, she was a doctor who could prescribe to herself, thankfully, um, but nobody could figure out what she had. She was told to go to the Mayo Clinic and NIH. The, um, they have a special clinic just for enigmas and nobody could figure it out. She finally read Goodbye Lupus and started my plan and she was able to lower her steroids for the moment with me and said, if you can fix me, I will give all the residents I oversee your book. Well, guess what? Uh, she got off the steroids completely and is doing really well. And she said she will keep up with that promise. Um, I've also helped a lot of children. Uh, unfortunately, children are getting sicker and sicker, younger and younger. This young lady was 11 years old with lupus in her, uh, in her heart, her lungs, um, and her kidneys. And she was a code blue that had to be shocked back to life at 11 years old. Um, and we put her on my program and she healed really quickly. These are text messages from her mom, cardiology appointment. Her heart was back to normal. Um, she started doing martial arts three times a week. And uh, her kidneys were back to normal within only two weeks. And then she kept going. She played piano, viola, and she wants to be a doctor. And she's a straight A student. And she went back to living her life. She's a teenager now, so she doesn't let me show her picture anymore because she's too cool for that. So I put a little face over it. But you could see uh, the difference. Look at the skin tone uh, and the source of smile. Um, it's helped people reverse HPV and cervical dysplasia. Uh, this was someone I've never met who just happened to make a YouTube video after going to my free classes and reading my book and got rid of her endometriosis. This is someone who just happened to work out next to me at the gym who had severe food allergies and high blood pressure. And uh, by changing his diet, getting him off the meat and dairy, he was able to go back to eating all the foods he used to need an epinephrine shot to be able to eat. Um, Bernard is a recent graduate of my rapid recovery group who's 77 and he came to me with high blood sugar and glaucoma and in week five, he was told he had normal eyes, no more glaucoma. And at the end of the group, I said, what was the best part, Bernard? And he said, I love the fact that my diabetes is under control. My, uh, my eyes are normal, but the best part is I learned from you how to be happy. He said, I was a grouchy man, and now I'm a happy person that lives in the moment all because of what you taught me. And that's also one of the best things to me is uh, if I can teach people happiness, then whatever your diagnosis is, you're still lucky to be here. And that's a big part of what I teach my rapid recovery group. Um, this is someone with peripheral neuropathy who did my rapid recovery group um, after chemotherapy. So she'd had cancer and chemotherapy and the chemo had caused peripheral neuropathy in her hands, fingers, and feet. And after three weeks, all of her chemo symptoms were gone. And after six weeks, the peripheral neuropathy was gone. And we've had other people who have healed completely from the negative effects of chemotherapy with our rapid recovery group. One, uh, one of them's in the group right now who just had a blood smear that was perfect. And the guy who did the smear said he's never seen somebody have a perfect blood smear after chemo, even after a year. And hers is only six weeks out. Um, this, I want to tell you this last one before I get into the nitty gritty, um, because I like stories and this is a really good story. So, um, Rachel came to me eight weeks pregnant and she had lupus and Sjogren's and it was pretty severe and she was immobilized. She had to start maternity leave really early, uh, because she couldn't get off the couch. She was in a lot of pain and, um, 
she was terrified about having a kid because after each pregnancy, she'd had one pregnancy that was successful, but she ended up very sick with autoimmune disease afterwards. Then she had a miscarriage. It was even worse. And she was terrified that when she gave birth, she was going to be stuck in the hospital when her baby was coming home. So she read goodbye lupus. She booked four week rapid recovery with me. We literally had four weeks before her C-section. So this was what she was eating every day. And, uh, and she was able to reverse her disease within the four weeks and have a healthy delivery, little munchkin. Um, this was her face before and that's after. And here's the thing. So this is really exciting, right? And actually she just had another baby, still lupus and Sjogren's free. She's off all medications for over four years now. She just had another baby during the pandemic, stayed disease-free, no medications necessary. So it has stuck and she has continued on. But right after she healed, they got a call that their mother-in-law, her mother-in-law, her husband's mother was in the hospital with her final heart attack. That's what they told him. Um, his mother had been sick for a long time. You can see she had morbid obesity. She was 68. She had type two diabetes, super high cholesterol, even though she was on cholesterol meds. And she'd had 25 heart attacks since 41 years old, three bypass surgeries, 10 stents. She was, she had bought her cardiologist, a new house, a new car, and a lot of vacations. Okay. Um, she had had heart failure for over two years now. And so in 2017, uh, the doctor called and said her heart was too sick to heal. This heart attack is her last come say goodbye. Her husband had just watched his wife heal from an incurable disease and have their baby. And he said, you know what? I'm just taking the blender and I teach how you can, you can get the nutrients you need just by blending and drinking them in a green smoothie, right? Brought the blender to the ICU and he gave her nothing but smoothies in the ICU. And in five days, she walked out five days and here she is. So a year later, she was off all of her cholesterol meds. She uh, had a little bit of remaining uh, insulin dependence, but she had good blood sugars on a small amount of insulin. She hadn't had any more chest pain, lost over 20 pounds, and she looked like that a year later. And she's doing a good job drinking her smoothie, right? From the doctor saying you're dead to walking out five days later and continuing to heal and be healthy. Now, the next person to get sick in the family is, is near the husband because after dealing with his wife's illness and then dealing with his mother's illness, the guy was under a lot of stress and he was stress eating. He was not eating what his wife was preparing. I know what she's eating. Um, he's a teacher and he was eating poorly at school lunch and everything. And so he gained a bit of weight about the midsection here. And he was diagnosed with fatty liver and diabetes. And he called me and said, I need help. Now we had a long conversation. Um, again, your emotional health is very key to your physical health. And I told him one, you've got to let go of the stress. Your wife's okay. And your mom's okay. And he started crying. I said, it's all right. You can heal. You have to mourn what you went through and you can heal. Now you don't have to take care of anybody else anymore, but yourself you follow along with the program. Here he is three weeks later, feel like a new person. He was working out three times a week. He was listening to me about getting his therapy. Uh, blood sugars came down to the one thirties and then one hundreds and he lost weight quickly. And he was coming off his diabetes meds already. Plus fatty liver disease that he'd had for years. One month later, normal liver enzymes. And six weeks later, look at that HbA1c, 4.8, six is diabetes. He blew right past normal <laughs> into abnormally good. Uh, and that's how quickly it works. Diabetes recovers so quickly on pure hypernourishment. I've never seen anything uh, that works as quickly as that. So that's him after looking handsome, of course. But here's the most important part of this to me. Um, these are their children. They're beautiful children. <laughs> that's the new one. <laughs> These children have the genes for lupus and Sjogren's, and they have the genes for heart failure and diabetes and fatty liver disease and probably a lot more. But the diseases stop here because these children are being fed in a different way where they can actually stop triggering the expression of the diseases that have been haunting this family and they can live healthy lives. And if I can teach you anything in the time we have together, it is that you can change things for yourself, but also for them, because we are now in a generation of children that are the unhealthiest they've ever been. I am working with kids two years old with lupus. Now, when I was 16, I was told I was young for lupus. And 
In fact, autoimmune diseases have been shown to be spreading all over the world at extremely high rates, entering into countries they never existed in before, mirroring the spread of the Western diet. We have to do something. If not for you, then for them. So I could do this all day with cases, um, but I was told I didn't have enough time for that. Uh, but the word has gotten out. And it really has been all word of mouth up until recently. I didn't even have a PR person until recently because I couldn't handle all of the requests for, for speaking anymore and I needed help. But it's all been word of mouth of people who have healed and then told everyone they knew about it. And that's what happens, that they become health missionaries. Like, you need to listen to this. David's mother, Glenda, carries goodbye lupus in her purse so that anyone she meets can hear the story and know what's possible. So this is spread like wildfire. I, uh, I published Goodbye Lupus in 2015. It has been a bestseller ever since. Um, my green smoothie recipes, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease was bestseller in the first day, um, which shows me that people need this and want this. Goodbye Lupus is my story of recovery and what to eat to heal. Goodbye Lupus is what do you mean you read Goodbye Lupus and you didn't do it yet? Here's all the emotional stuff that's getting in your way and how to fix that, as well as dozens and dozens of case studies and reversing many different diseases. Um, we, I've been featured in the cover of Vegan Health and Fitness multiple times. There's me with my family. Uh, that's me with Dr. Garth Davis. That's my husband and I at Fit Over 40, which, by the way, instead of being disabled by 40, getting to be on the cover of Fit Over 40 was pretty darn cool. I was in tears about it. Um, I've been in documentaries like Eating You Alive and The Home and Family Show, and I'm always on TV news all the time. Um, I've been on plant-based news multiple times, which I really appreciate them for spreading the word like they do. Um, I was just, this was just from a recent appearance I did. And I've gotten a lot of recognition in other ways that have meant the world to me, um, especially places like, you know, if you've heard of T. Colin Campbell's Center for Nutrition Studies, um, I am a professor on his eCornell course, and I am the only autoimmune expert lecturer for that course. And they told me it was because nobody gets the results I do in disease reversal for autoimmune. Um, and they wanted me to be the one to, to teach for them. I've also recently uh, been elected to the Forbes Health Advisory Board, which also means a lot to me because I'm the first plant-based doctor to be on the Forbes Health Advisory Board, and it's going to bring me even more into the mainstream. So what all this means to me really is that the word is getting out, and that's what means the most to me. I actually only plan to work with the homeless. That was my original job. I was never looking for the spotlight, um, but if being in the spotlight means that I can reach other people and they get to live the dream that I do of having a family and life and purpose and being without pain, then I'm happy to do it over and over again, even as I'm doing it right now. So hopefully all of that gets you motivated to hear the hard news about what you got to do. All right. Um, there is more information, by the way, I wanted to bring up um, some of this newer research really quickly. I was just mentioning uh, the rise and spread of autoimmune diseases. Um, and, you know, geneticists were trying to figure out why autoimmune diseases are spreading and raising so quickly. And they thought maybe there was a change in human genetics. If it's a genetic disease, like Western medicine says, then maybe human genetics is changing. And that's why suddenly there's Crohn's disease in the Middle East where it never was before. Turns out, no, what they found is human genetics has not changed much of the past uh, four decades. But what they did find was that the rise and spread of the Western diet, or the rise and spread, I'm sorry, of autoimmune disease has exactly mirrored the rise and spread of the Western diet, which makes a whole lot of sense, right? Um, we've also found uh, that nutrition affects COVID and COVID has been a part of our lives now for a couple of years. And this first study was really interesting because it was uh, one that was studied in British Medical Journal that found that um, before we had vaccines or treatments, that doctors who were plant-based and nurses had a 70% lower rate of moderate to severe COVID than everybody else, seven zero, 70% lower. And those that were um, high protein, low carb had almost a 50% higher rate of moderate to severe COVID, which really showed that people who were eating all plants were very protected. People who were eating almost no plants had much higher rates of disease, right? And um, for those who were in the middle, the pescatarians, they were in the middle. They had a 50% uh, lower rate of COVID compared to everyone else, but not as good as the people who were only plant-based, which is a really important differentiation on just the harm alone that fish does, because a lot of people try to say fish is healthy, but the proof is in the research, right? Um, we've also found that uh, there's a difference in, uh, in the RNA replication of viruses. This is me on a recent news uh, 
that I did last week, which is kind of funny because I was talking about green smoothies and look at the green tie and the green suit. I mean, it was pretty cool, not planned, but awesome. Uh, where they found that Johns Hopkins just found that cruciferous vegetables actually cuts the, the rate of replication of the COVID RNA virus in half in half. So if you combine illuminating stuff like meat and dairy animal products and hyper nourishment with cruciferous vegetables, Holy moly, uh, that's going to make a big difference in your health. And it really just corresponds with what I've been teaching for over a dozen years, which is that your immune function is dependent on your nourishment levels and how you're eating, right? That if you are eating in a way that supports immune function, you will have reversal of disease and you'll be more resistant to things like infections. And they found this is also true for the cold virus as well. And that's what I've seen over the years is people do my program for lupus and then they stop getting the colds and flus that they used to get. So all really good research that supports what we've been doing for a very long time. Um, so what's important to understand is that a healthy immune system can reverse disease, can fight disease and can recover from disease, right? Really important to understand. So this is what you need to know, right? In my book, Goodbye Lupus, and in my free classes that I'm going to show you uh, a link to at the end, because really, it takes me five hours to teach all the science. So I figured I'll just give you a link to watch that on your own uh, for free um, to add to even more of the free good stuff you're getting here. But the summary of it is that, first of all, first three steps are all about uh, stop getting sicker, right? One of the things my husband teaches when he teaches rapid fat loss is if you want to lose a lot of fat, stop getting fatter first, right? <laughs> Very important. If you want to get healthy, stop getting sicker. So you have to eliminate the inflammatory foods. Now, I'm sure that you guys have heard that, so, that this stuff is unhealthy, animal products, processed foods, and oils, right? Um, I hope that you're hearing that from people. And so I'm not going to go into all the different reasons why. I'm going to focus specifically on the effects of these products on your immune system. I'm going to show you some science behind it because I can't help it. I love science and I personally like to understand rather than just have somebody wave their finger and tell me what to do. But don't get stuck on the pathways. Just try to go with it. And then if you want to learn it more in depth, like I said, I'll show you a link where you can just sit and enjoy hours of it. Okay. Um, so animal products, right? The dairy, the meat, the cheeses. Um, here's the immune pathway I want you to be att pay attention to. So this is the pathway uh, that creates your inflammatory immune system. Now the inflammatory immune system is important for things like fighting viruses, but if it's overactive, it can actually be problematic. And the reason it would be overactive, one of the reasons would be that you're oversupplying arachidonic acid, which is a precursor to making your inflammatory immune system. And where does arachidonic acid come from? All this stuff here that I mentioned before. So if you have too much arachidonic acid, you're going to make too much of these enzymes and you're going to make too much of the products. So the five locks enzyme, so let me show you. So when you eat too much arachidonic acid from any of those sources, you're going to upregulate all of these products, right? Now, 5 LOX is, uh, is used for cell growth, right? Which is important. We need cells to be able to grow and repair themselves if we're injured. Problem is, is that if you have too much cell growth, what do you have? You have cancer growth, right? Now, leukotriene B4 is an immune modulator, but when it's overstimulated, you're going to have more inflammatory illnesses, right? Inflammatory bowel disease, asthma, heart disease, chronic inflammation, arthritis, um, edema, pain. So if you have too much of this or you have this, guess what you're probably eating too much of? This right here, right? COX-1, you might've heard that if you take a COX-1 inhibitor like aspirin, you can prevent heart attacks and strokes, right? But how about we stop feeding the pathway that creates heart attacks and strokes, right? COX-2 is involved in many things, but also in vascular generation, okay? So uh, growth of blood vessels, again, mostly used for if you have damage, let's say you get injured, you're going to need to repair and, and fix a blood vessel. Or if you're exercising and you're trying to grow your muscles, you might have branching of blood vessels, which would be a good thing. But if you overstimulate COX-2, you're going to have increased blood supply to cancer, which will cause cancer growth to go up. And more prostaglandin E2 is going to cause also cancer, irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, chronic pain, and inflammation. Now, just so you know, I was taught this pathway in medical school, as were other doctors. The problem is they don't include the part at the top. What we learned for this pathway is what medicines to use in these different areas. Okay. So using medications, we can block these enzymes, but we're never taught about this part up here. And I find that to be, uh, when I teach medical professionals, doctors, they're most blown away by that fact right there. Now, the other part to, um, understanding this, right. Is how do you get healthy? 
So you want to one, stop getting sicker. So you stop damaging your body, but you also have to repair damage in order to be healthy, right? And get yourself to a level to be resilient. So I would say you don't just add nourishment. I add what we call hypernourishment. So hypernourishment is a protocol that my husband and I developed that's an intentional overdose in the nutrients your body uses for cellular repair and optimal immune function. So it's very specific. It's not like a lot of things that you'll hear where people say, I don't know, eat more plants, eat less meat, right? We're very, very specific in exactly what foods you need uh, based off of one, understanding the science and two, a uh, dozen years of experience. So we created a hyper nourishment protocol so that you don't just get healthier a little bit at a time, but you can actually reverse disease at record rates. You might've noticed that those people I showed you they were having changes within one to two months, six weeks, right? That is pure hypernourishment. That's how pure hypernourishment works. But hypernourishment itself is about what you're adding to your diet. So no matter what diet you're on, you can add hypernourishment and you can slow down the effects of the negative things that have happened and improve your health. It's always a good thing. I still hypernourish myself and I've been disease free for 16 years. And what it does is it keeps me from getting infections. It keeps me from aging. Uh, it keeps me having tons of energy. So it's always a good thing to add no matter what. So what is hypernourishment? I'm going to break down the ingredients. And again, the deeper dive would be in, in my classes, which again are free. Um, first, a focus on raw vegetables. This is not something that is brought up very much. In fact, it used to be controversial when I first started saying this because people like to bring up studies that were done in Petri dishes about like the breakdown of nutrients, blah, blah, blah. What I really care about is results that happen in real people, results trump theories every single day. And what we found is when people do cooked vegetables, they don't get rapid results the way they do on the raw vegetables. So guess what is better to use the raw vegetables, specifically cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables, as I mentioned before, that are shown to stop the replication of COVID um, also will accelerate cellular repair and optimize immune function. So whether it's disease reversal you want or just to be more resilient to infections, cruciferous vegetables are the key. Now, I normally, if I have somebody who's sick, I will put them on at least 16 ounces a day, which is a lot. Uh, for some people who have not had fiber in a while, it can take a minute. And I didn't even get into reversing Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, which works well. And yes, they need fiber. So uh, this is a crucial ingredient. So if that's something that's missing from your diet, if the only raw vegetable you eat is a piece of kale on your burger or even your veggie burger, you've got to add this to your diet if you want to start changing your health. And I really recommend the salad becomes the meal. You know, put your beans and tofu and other things as your sides are on the salad, but don't make the salad little tiny and then eat a big giant plate of something that's not really doing much for you. Water intake. Um, so a lot of people are extremely dehydrated and water isn't really brought up when people talk about nutrition or in the medical world in general. You know, water is key for all the chemical reactions that take place when you need to lose fat, right? Or gain muscle, but also for repair of your cells, okay? Now, dehydration is also the main cause of these three things that people spend a lot of money trying to fix. Number one, headaches. Number two, constipation. And number three is fatigue right? How much money do people spend on caffeine and laxatives and ibuprofen and Tylenol, right? Because they're trying to get rid of those symptoms that could be fixed if they would just get hydrated. All right. So hydration is extremely important. And for most people, about an ounce, half an ounce to an ounce per pound uh, up into a gallon is a good place to go. For people doing hypernourishment with me, unless they are really, really light, I start them at at least 96 ounces a day. Again, that might seem like a lot, but this is hypernourishment. This is an intentional overdose in nutrition to accelerate the process. And when you get a lot of water in, you actually feel a lot better. The energy is wonderful. Uh, you get exercise running to the bathroom. <laughs> Um, but it really does make a difference. And I've seen people before who will tell me, you know, I'm trying to do everything but the water because I don't want to drink water and they don't get those results until they add the water. So make sure that you're doing that. Even for exercise, people who are running every day and they're not losing fat, you add the water, right? As well as adding this other key ingredient that affects your immune function, which is omega-3s. Um, unfortunately, the world of fats has been just really turned into mythology in a lot of ways. It's frustrating on both sides. There's people who try to promote fats that we know are unhealthy. So for example, coconut oil, that is not a healthy food. That actually will raise your cholesterol right away. In fact, I've had patients that 
had we're plant based on on coconut oil and then their cholesterol was through the roof and got rid of it and it came back down right so it's a saturated fat that can cause harm in fact i got it got my money back from costco because i bought coconut oil which i only use on my skin uh but they actually gave me money back because they got sued because it said healthy on the label and they got sued uh and so they gave the money back they settled and gave the money back but i wasn't eating it anyway but i you know they, they want to give me a refund. Okay. Um, but, uh, right. So there's some people and they're saying butter is good for you. Put it in your coffee or coffee if you're from New York. Right. So this is all nonsense, right? Those are, those are foods that are going to increase the stress on your system. But then there's the other camp that's saying all fats are bad, which is also not true. All right. So again, when you look at cellular function and the impact of nutrition on cells, the answers are there. Okay. So when you look at for example, omega-3 fatty acids, those are essential for cellular function. And so I see a lot of folks who went on plant-based diets who were fat-free, who started having a lot of problems or their metabolism got really slow where they're eating 800, 900 calories a day and they still can't lose weight and they are completely malnourished of their fatty acids, okay? So I'm gonna show you how that affects the immune system and how you can compare it to what I just taught you before about the fats from animal products and oils. So omega-3 fatty acids integrated into cellular membranes. And this is why it's really important. You know, why I, I hear people oversimplify and say, you know, anytime you eat fat, it can make you fatter. That is a wrong deduction that any fat you eat can become body fat, but that is not true. Some fats become cells and omega-3 fatty acids become cells. They become part of your cell membranes um, for your entire body, your nervous system and your immune cells. So if you have healthy cells with a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in them, nutrients get in easily and toxins pass out easily. So think about it. If you're someone who's eating a no fat diet and you've hit a plateau where you just can't seem to finish getting better, or if you eat one thing that's off plan, you feel sick, it's because you're having difficulty getting all the nutrients in and you still have toxins that are trapped right? Um, which is what we see here. So people who don't get enough omega-3s will have rigid membranes that do not allow for proper cellular communication and receiving uh, nutrients or releasing them. They're also essential for our nervous system. So um, they're the building blocks of healthy neurons in our cells. They improve memory, mood, and cognitive function. Really, really important. Uh, if you want to keep yourself sharp in the head, make sure you have omega-3 fatty acids. Um, are anti-aging, they protect against dementia and Alzheimer's. And I know you guys are going to get some brain lectures, so I won't dig in too deep there. But here's the part that I find to be really, really uh, attractive is what they do for the immune system. So omega-3 fatty acids, and I'm using flax and chia seeds because they are the best source and they're really cheap. It's like one twenty nine a pound in, uh, in my local store. All right. When you use those, and I use about a handful a day for healthy people or about a half a cup a day for people who are doing my most aggressive programs. Um, or if you get super bloated or can't handle fiber, you can use cold pressed flax oil. A few tablespoons will do the job too. Okay. So these give you something called alpha linoleic acid. Okay. And when you have that, um, it's going to be broken down into the anti-inflammatory immune cells. So this is what we really want, right? We want the anti-inflammatory immune cells that are going to give us the protection to be able to fight back against the negative effects of prolonged inflammation and bring us back to baseline. And think about that. When we were like running free in, in, in nature before we became civilized and started cooking all of our foods and, and inventing uh, drug-like foods or food-like drugs, um, we were eating just plants growing outside, right? Now, regular plants like greens, like kale, have a little bit of omega-3 in them. And if we were just eating that way, we would never have to hyper-nourish with high levels of omega-3s like chias and flaxseeds. However, um, because we have overdosed in omega-6 from animal products and oils and all those things, we now have to fix the problem because you know what we really are looking for is a healthy ratio of six to three. And for healthy people, they found they probably have a healthy ratio of like nine to one to, to one to one. I've had people tested who have had a ratio of 200 to one, six to three. So it's important that we really uh, push this number up and get this into people's bodies, okay? So these are the anti-inflammatory uh, prostaglandins and leukotrienes that you're going to get from omega-3 fatty acids. And you've probably heard of EPA and DHA, which are really good for brain health as well. All right, now I want to show you something really cool. 
And this is one of the reasons why we're able to get the dramatic results we get with people. One, because we have a specific protocol, but specifically uh, in addition, using the omega-3s to really accelerate the process by increasing cellular communication, right? So these are the two pathways that I showed you before. Please do not feel like you have to memorize this. I just wanna show you a comparison side by side of the two pathways, the omega-6 inflammatory pathway and the omega-3 anti-inflammatory pathway. They look pretty similar to each other. And in fact, the same enzyme, delta-60 saturase is responsible for breaking down uh, both beginning products, okay? LA and ALA. So maybe you've heard before that people cannot effectively break down uh, ALA from flax and chia into uh, EPA, DHA, and all these things below. And that can be true because delta-60 saturase actually prefers the inflammatory pathway for some reason. So if you have high amounts of vegetable oils, animal fats, processed foods, then you can take this enzyme and keep it too busy over here to do the job over here. But if you eliminate the inflammatory foods, then you're going to get that enzyme to really focus on the omega-3 pathway. Bam! And that's going to give you that hit of anti-inflammatory that you really want. And very excitingly, when you have higher levels of EPA, it actually will block the conversion of arachidonic acid into the inflammatory components. So if you look at that and say, wow, if I stop eating these things and I really start to hypernourish over here, I could bring inflammation down in record time. And that is why it's really important to include those omega-3s in your recovery. And you're not going to get the same benefit from like a little pill or capsule uh, than you do from getting the higher amounts from the foods. Now, there's multiple ways you can do this. Not everybody likes to eat a salad that's bigger than their head like I do. So we had to come up with a way. I really love kale. We had to come up with a way that would help people who really are used to a Western diet to be willing to hypernourish. And that's when we came up with the smoothie solution. And what we found is that if we could get people to put all the nutrition into a blender and blend it up, so you take like 75% of the blender and you just shove kale um, spinach, which is not cruciferous, but very high nutrient. You know, you put those greens in there. Some people like cabbage, whatever. I like to get power greens from Costco. You get 24 ounces, big giant bag, you shove it in there till it's 75% full. Then you take that handful of flax or chia and you throw it in there. Then you take water hydration and you fill it up to the level of the greens. And then you add fruit, whatever fruit you like. Frozen fruit makes it extra delicious, right? Bananas, mangoes, pineapples, and you blend it. And it turns out if it tastes enough like fruit, people will drink it, but it's not a fruit smoothie. Fruit smoothies are usually like anointed by a little bit of green. This is a green smoothie that's gonna really get you those results. Now we share tons of recipes. My husband made this website um, called smoothieshred.com where we share for free. You don't even have to like give your email address or anything. You just go there and it's free recipes, free videos, all because we wanna help the public. I always say, we, you have to save your life. And he always says, you have to save your wife. But whatever it is, is your reason. Make sure that you get the recipe so they taste good because when people go and try to make their own recipe, usually it's a disaster. These are tried and true and good. So just follow those. You don't even have to get my smoothie book. You can just follow the free recipes on the website and you're gonna get really yummy smoothies, okay? And this is what the website looks like. You can see smoothie recipes and videos and all sorts of fun stuff, right? So here's the recipes that are on the website and there's more stuff there, but yeah, it's worth it. Go there. Um, and there's tons of videos there too, in case you haven't gotten tired of my voice yet. Uh, there's lots of videos from both of us that all about what we teach and trying to help people. His is a lot on um, bodybuilding and fat loss. And of course, mine's all about inflammation and disease, but we work together every day. So that's one place, make sure you screenshot it and go there so you can just keep learning for free, right? Um, and so we also have a Facebook page that you can join that's a smoothie solution. <clears throat> and that's also, it's just a free community that we have um, where we help people every day who have questions and want to support each other. You know, everyone with the green mustache who wants to share what they're doing. And it's really cool. You know, people are losing in incredible amounts of weight, um, eight pounds, two inches off the waist. Look at all this um, blood pressure back to normal in one month off coffee and anxiety meds and anxiety and sinus meds, uh, down 11 pounds, lupus going into remission, running. So all of this stuff is really cool. And people are just sharing their results for free. So what I want to leave you with at the end is really the other side of it, which is what you can do right now to make a difference in your life. Okay. Um, so number one, 
at least add what you're missing. Hypernourish, right? And if you want a deeper nosedive, like I said, into all the science behind it, go ahead and take it, but don't let that stop you from taking action and just go ahead and do it. Face down your fear of the green and embrace it, all right? The other things you need to do have to do with really your psychological mindset. Um, you know, before I focused entirely on disease reversal, I became a trauma specialist. And my greatest joy was helping people become trauma resilient and learn that there is a way to reconnect with joy. And a lot of that I actually learned not from the 12 different certifications and psychotherapies and becoming a brain doctor, but from my grandparents and what they taught me about resilience and truth and joy and, and, and really seeing all that you have in this life rather than a focus on what you might have lost. And so that's a big part of what I teach in rapid recovery. Like I have a group starting, another group starting May 20th. We have one that's just finishing up. We have one more week to go, a week and a half. Um, and it's extraordinary the changes that happen in people's lives when they can release anxiety and trauma and depression and learn forgiveness and learn joy. Uh, it's an extraordinary gift to be able to give. So the um, so adding what you're missing uh, in your nutrition is one thing. Um, taking action starting now is something else. Uh, don't wait for New Year's. Don't wait for your birthday. Don't wait till you finish that bag of junk food. Uh, just start. You can start with today. When I'm finished chatting with you, if you want to, you know, go to the fridge and grab a snack, maybe grab a carrot, maybe make a salad. You have a choice. And no matter what happened five minutes ago, you can make a choice right now that you're going to do something different, that you're going to do something better for yourself. And so you can do that now. So many people get into this all or nothing mindset. And there's actually, I teach that in my book and in my group that they'll say, oh, I already ate off plan. Guess the day's ruined. No, it's not. No, it's not. You can choose what you do next. And that's the most important thing is just what's next. And you don't have to keep going with what you were doing before. You can continue to choose better. Another thing that I really emphasize in my, in my rapid recovery group and in goodbye autoimmune disease is celebrating every win. Um, when you're focused on loss, when you're focused on what you think is wrong, sometimes you miss everything that's good. And it's such an important thing. It's why I make them celebrate every day in my group because they'll forget. They'll forget. They're so focused on their knee pain that they'll forget that the joint pain in their hands is better and that their energy is better and that all these other things are better. And so I really emphasize ending each day with celebrations. And if this is something that you think you need help with, I encourage you to have a celebrations journal get a book where you sit down and every day at the end of the day before bed, you count your blessings. You count everything that's good that day. And the worse your day was, the more blessings you need to come up with. That's what used to help me when I was the sickest, when I was uh, getting chemotherapy, there were some really long nights where I was very ill vomiting one night. I was so sick and they gave me a medicine to stop the vomiting. And then I had a side effect where my eyes couldn't close. So now I couldn't sleep. My eyes were stuck open. I'm vomiting. It was a bad night and I had some bad nights, but what used to help me through those nights the most was that I would start counting my blessings in my head of everything that made me grateful from my family to my brain, to the things I wanted to do in this world, to the beauty in this world that I saw to star Trek or anything that made me smile until I started crying with, just happy tears for feeling so lucky, even in that moment. If you can find a path to celebrate on the worst days, then there's going to be a lot less bad days and things can't bring you down because you can remember how good they are. Celebrating is not a small thing. It's an essential habit for happy people. And happiness is a habit. It's based off of how we think and what we do. So is depression. So making that a habit can really encourage you and motivate you. And most importantly, make you enjoy your life. Um, focusing on your why. This is a big thing that I do at the beginning of my group where I want them to picture the life that they are creating for themselves. Now, this is actually us celebrating our 10 year anniversary. And that's why the kids were there. And we put on, I saved my wedding dress. I will wear that as many times as I can. Um, so I saved my wedding dress and we, and we renewed our vows and my little boys were there. Um, this is my why in a picture, right? Uh, I want to grow old with this beautiful man. Uh, we still can't even look each other in the eye more than a few seconds without crying, just in gratitude, both of us. I mean, we have such a beautiful life together um, with each other, with our children and the work we get to do together to help others. My boys are incredible. They are so smart and so sweet and just so loving. Um, and they're, <laughs> my nine-year-old said the other day, he goes, mommy, you're the sugar to my dopamine, which... <laughs> 
is really sweet, but also really smart. I'm so proud of them and everything that they're doing in this world. And my why is bigger than that. You are part of my why. You right there talk, listening to me talk right now, you are a part of my why. Because my purpose is also to bring hope and inspiration and education and healing into people's lives. And so I need to continue taking great care of myself so that I can help others get to live their dreams and learn how to take care of themselves. So you really need to have a very big why in order to get through the hard times, especially if you're trying to change your diet, right? A lot of people will focus on what they want right now instead of on what they want most, right? Right now you might want pizza, but if what you want most is to walk through Venice pain-free, <laughs> right? Instead of being in pain all the time, you've got to focus on Venice and see the pizza as the enemy that will keep you from Venice, right? That we have to re, we have to change how we look at foods that hurt us. That if something is making us sicker, it's not a treat, it is a toxin. And when you can change your mindset and focus on that big why of what you want most in this world, rather than what you want in the moment to get high or deal with a, an emotional issue you're having, that's when you live on a greater level. I just uh, did some big coaching in my group with someone who posted that she ate off plan. She ate buttered toast because she had a fight with her husband and she needed comfort. And I said, that was not comfort. Comfort helps you heal the wound, right? If you were comforted, like with therapy, time with your friends, exercise, the wound contracts and you start getting better. But when you eat buttered toast, you are making yourself sicker. If you eat wine or, or did cocaine, it's the same thing, right? You're hiding from the feeling temporarily, but when that, when that rush, that high goes away, underneath it is the same wound that was there before, but now it's even bigger because you have to add your guilt and shame on top of it for having eaten something that you had said you weren't going to eat. So again, you want to focus on that big why of what you're creating for yourself and you want to discover real comfort. I call it self-care, real comfort that actually makes you feel emotionally nourished. And that's a big thing. There are some people who, even if they eat perfectly, will not get that rapid recovery without doing the emotional work. And that's really why I created my programs like Rapid Recovery, because there are some people who need to see every day, have someone say, this is what you did. This is how your thoughts are affecting you. This is how your, your actions are affecting you. And when they can face that and learn and grow, it changes not just their health in the moment, it changes their life forever. But this, if you're going to start somewhere on your own, figure out what your why is, turn it into pictures, put it front and center for yourself so you can give yourself everything that you truly want rather than whatever you're craving in the moment. Also find a supportive community. I showed you our Smoothie Shred community, but you know there's there are communities out there. You can go online and find plant-based groups or just find groups that, you know, where, where you can find people in your life doing what you do. It's weird sometimes to other people who have known you forever if you're suddenly drinking a green smoothie instead of a beer <laughs> or a milkshake, right? Um, and sometimes uh, you can fall prey to what they're doing. You know, my husband always teaches that environment will always win. And so if you don't have a community of supportive people, then you're eventually going to start doing with whatever your group is doing. So it's really important to find a supportive community. And, you know, we have that free group. Maybe there's others in your area, but find a way to surround yourself with people who are doing the kind of things that you're doing. Okay. So that's ours. And because I can't stay here for five hours the way I'd like to, um, I just want to show you where you can also watch my free classes, which are all about how to reverse disease with supermarket foods, but the detailed version. So what I just taught you today, but add another like four hours to it. Okay. And you would just go to goodbylupus.com and click the watch classes for free. And then you'll see when you get to the website, you just scroll down and then you'll see a thing at the bottom that says um, watch free. So don't do the buying, do the one on this left side here uh, that says here we go, free classes. Click on that, watch them for free, share them with your friends, learn, get inspired. It has dozens and dozens of case studies, but I want you to learn this, I want you to understand it, and I want you to take action on it because it will change your life. And, uh, and I want you to have that life that you really want, okay? So really important for that, you make sure you check that out. Here's ways to stay in touch with me if you wanna take a screenshot. Uh, I'm sorry of that. I'm on social media every day teaching for free. Every single day, I post something to keep people inspired, motivated, educated, and moving forward. 
because it matters to me that you guys stay focused on what you need to do. And a lot of people have told me that they would have gone and eaten something bad, but then I posted something and they went, oh man, thank you. That's what I needed. That's what I'm trying to do to help you guys as much as I can, uh, as often as I can. Um, and of course, if you want to reach me directly, um, that's my info. So you can take a screenshot and be able to do that. So that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I hope that you learned a lot. I did want to leave time for questions because I know some of them are just burning, burning, and you need to ask me some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my slideshow. Take that screenshot if you didn't yet, and uh, and we can move on to the question part of things. Oh my God. Um, I I just um, this is not about me, and there's so many people that want to talk, but I I just. I know on behalf of all of us, like, thank you for sharing your heart, for ch sharing your gifts, changing your, our lives, your vulnerability, your heart. Um, I, I, am, I am being stingy if I do not share this presentation with every single person I've ever known. Thank you, Dr. Goldner. Like, really, thank you. Um, thank I don't want to take any more pleasure. time. I, um, I just want to make sure everybody knows and everybody's got their hands raised already. For those of you that don't know how, go ahead and raise your hand. We typically ask people to raise their hands. We don't take questions directly from the chat. I don't think we're going to have time to anyway. Um, but if you don't know how to raise your hand, click on your reactions tab, click the raise hand button, and we'll get to as many as we possibly can. I'll try. And I'll do my best to keep brief. I can't, I, I, I'll try not to expound. I'll do, I'll try to do rapid fire. What, what we, 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 every, whatever you can do, we want to hear it. And just what a blessing. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Um, Thank you. Let's go straight to Ramona. Ramona, welcome. <laughs> Just... Ramona, that's are you there? That's that. No, that's the... not... Hi, Ramona. Ramona. Are you there, Ramona? Yeah, I'm oh. here. Yeah. Hi, welcome. Hi, welcome. I think we're going to come back to Ramona. Um, and <laughs> let's, <busy>. go... <laughs> uh, let's go now to Diana. Welcome, Diana. Diana R. Oh, my goodness. I'm with a moderator. Brooke, every time I hear your story, it brings me to tears. You have changed my life. You have changed everybody. Never stop telling that beautiful story. I look at your family, and I'm, like, grabbing the tissues. Never stop telling your story. I share you. Every time you post something on Facebook, I share it with as many people as I possibly can. Thank you. Just thank you for everything. That's oh. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And let's go over to Parn. Am I, I hope I'm saying that right. Welcome. Oh, hi. Hi, Dr. G. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Um, and uh, Ben summarized it very nicely. Oh, wow. Your story. I've been following your work. And what I want to say is you stand out. There's so many people helping people outside. But what you stand out is how much time you give to actually help people. And I think you have a lived experience. That's what also stands out. And the compassion, it shows in your compassion. I think you know how people are feeling outside. And it shows how you, so much free time you give. But I have it also, I have a question. Um, and I, I give information to anybody I hear can get help. And um, you say that, uh, and uh, it's so many testimonials, um, so many people in your group, uh, six weeks, some people it takes eight weeks, some take two months. For some, it takes four months. Uh, my question is, you say your diet is simple, but hard to do. It's very simple, but hard to do. Um, simple, but not always easy, right. <laughs> I don't think it's hard to do. I think it's easier than taking prednisone or uh, steroids or uh, immunosuppressants or in being in pain and dying, it's easier than that. But my question is, if mental health is taken care of and somebody uh, follows the diet to exactly how you say, does anybody and everybody can reverse their disease autoimmune, which is you're doing impossible possible, by the way. Is it possible for everybody if they take care of their mental health and uh, follow your diet as you say they need to follow. Well, thank you for, for everything that, that you said. I appreciate that. You made me cry some more and I'm always in tears. I'm always like wiping my nose when I teach. I'm like, oh, I already start crying. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's possible for everyone to optimize their health. 
the difference, there's always going to be a difference in, in results um, for different people because of so many factors. It's why I created things like rapid recovery, because if I'm watching, then I can figure it out, right? So sometimes it's the emotional work that they need more help with. Sometimes they have a food sensitivity that they didn't realize they had, and I'm able to identify it. So sometimes there's factors that can, you know, affect recovery speed. Um, the other thing is um, how, what sickness they have and how long. So for example, I have multiple people in my current group with lupus in their kidneys. One person already had normal kidney tests in their blood tests only a few weeks in. Other ones, they're not going to be there yet, but they're going to improve. We're going to see improvement because kidneys love my nutrition. Um, so even people without kidney failure, the kidney kidney results always get better. But um, so it, it really depends on where they are. You know, if you're in stage five versus stage four, we're not going to get the same results, right? And because you're going to you're going to have to you're not going to get to the same the same height at the same time, right? So it depends how deep the hole is that you're in. The other thing that can affect uh, recovery is damage, right? So for example. If someone has kidney failure or lung failure, um, they may never get to normal. Like we had someone in a recent group that had, he was on oxygen after COVID and it had destroyed his lung tissue. And they said he was going to have to stay on oxygen. Well, by the end of the group, he no longer needed to be on oxygen just all the time, just after exercise. So he wasn't perfect. It wasn't like COVID never happened, but it still was a miracle. And actually someone else in his group got off the lung transplant list for lupus in his lungs, but that was a separate guy, right? So here's two people with lung issues. One is off the transplant list because his lungs are so much better. One's off oxygen, which is great news, right? But not perfect yet. So the, the goal really is to get you healing as quickly as your body can and then deal with any issues that come up. So what I've seen in general is if people are really happy and they love their life, they love their work, they're in a healthy relationship, they get better really quickly. We had a lady in my group who lived at the beach. Nice if you can do it, right? Uh, happily married, no kids, so no, no stress, right? And her lupus symptoms were gone in two weeks, which is extraordinary, right? Then I have other folks who have intense health anxiety. They have terrible jobs. They're fighting with their spouse. They've got a lot of stress. So I call that, it's like picking the scab. You're hyper nourishing, trying to heal as quickly as you can, but then your anxiety and your depression and your stress picks up the scab, which can slow it down. So that complicates it. But in general, when we do rapid recovery with people in six weeks, and it's rapid recovery if I'm watching you and doing everything we can every day, right? Most people who do rapid recovery are significantly, if not wholly better. And it's really cool because we have a Zoom meeting at the end where everybody comes on and tells their results. And the majority of people coming in, they are like 80 to 100 percent better. It's really remarkable. And, and it's often just like someone I was just looking at my group today and it was someone who's had um, a pain for 11 years and her pain's gone. And we're in week five, 11 years and it's just gone. So the norm in my world is people just get better and they get better quickly. But there are things that can change it where you can't pick like, oh yes, you have this illness, this will be four weeks and this will be six weeks. I kind of have to see you do it. And then we can get you going as fast as you can. And then I can identify anything holding you back. Uh, that's absolutely remarkable. Thank you so much for that. And um, I'm gonna go over to Terry G. Um, and again, just a reminder to everybody, we have you know only a few minutes and we wanna ask everybody to keep their questions uh, short and to the point. Thank you. Terry, I'm asking you to unmute now, if you can do that. Hi, Terry. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Brooke. You can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. My son was just diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. I was just wondering if you've had any, any experience with that disease. Absolutely, we have. Uh, and we've had really good results with it as well. Uh, and something you can also add to pure hypernourishment is there's been some really good studies and I've experimented with it as well. Uh, creatine and exercise can actually help reduce symptoms as well while you're working on hypernourishment. Um, but get them started now. If he's just being diagnosed, and first of all, I'm sorry, mama, like as a mom now, I know I would go through 12 years of lupus again, rather than have them be sick a day. So I'm sorry for what you're going through. Make sure you take care of yourself too, but it's early and his body knows how to be healthy. It can remember it clearly. So just take massive action now. Um, and then if you need help, you know, you can always, you can always work with me or something if you want to, but at least start taking action right away. Thanks very much, doctor, for that. And uh, let's go to Carrie P. Hi, Carrie. Oh, uh oh, Carrie, I'm going to unmute you, okay? Hang on. Hi, Carrie. Oh. Hi, can, you can hear me? 
We can. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, so many questions. Thank you so much. I love you so much, Dr. G. Um, let me ask you, though, um, I guess dealing with people dealing with um, lots of weight to lose, like 150 pounds to lose, diabetes, autoimmune, the whole can of caboodle. Um, the, I know your recommendations, the omega-3s and how that all works. So taking the, the one cup of the flax or the chia, um, will, will you still be able to lose weight in, in doing that as well? I guess just if you could speak to reversing, you know, losing the weight and, and, and diabetes, that would be great. I, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. You will accelerate your weight loss with higher levels of omega-3. So remember what I was teaching before is that omega-3 fatty acids do not become fat cells. They cannot. What they do is accelerate your metabolism. So my husband actually did, um, he did an experiment in this where when he had those boot camps in Orange County, he had everybody on the same workouts and he was experimenting with omega-3 and metabolism, right? So I told you we're results-based. Uh, so what he did was he put everyone on the same diet, but he gave them different amounts of omega-3 and he pushed the doses up high, thousands of calories from omega-3 fatty acids, right? And what he found was the more they ate of the omega-3s, and this was on top of the regular diet, the faster the fat loss results, the faster with no upper limit. In fact, when people stopped eating more, it was only because they couldn't stomach any more of it, but there was no upper limit. So it actually will only accelerate the process. And I know a lot of diabetes nutrition protocols will say to avoid all fat, but that's not the case because again, saturated fat clogging insulin receptors, that will cause diabetes, but omega-3 fatty acids do not clog insulin receptors. They accelerate cellular uh, responsiveness and recovery. So, yep. I mean, a cup is a lot. You probably just won't even be able to, you know, uh, stomach that much, but you don't have to worry about overdoing it. Same with avocados, by the way, avocados don't have a negative impact on, on diabetes. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, doctor. And mm -hmm. up next, we're going to bring in Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, I just have two questions. I've actually done a little bit of, uh, of your program myself. I'm actually a nurse. My husband's a physician, a psychiatrist. Anyways, um, the questions are, are there any limit to the amount of flax seeds or chia seeds that you can take every day? No. My yeah, I was just, I was just answering about that. Absolutely not. Again, your gut will usually limit you, right? If you have too much seeds, you're going to overdose fiber and you're going to get constipated. If you have too much flax oil, you're going to explode uh, with watery diarrhea, right? So you, you usually over time people can do more, but I've noticed, I've found that like a half a cup a day or three tablespoons of flax oil, that's a really high amount. That's going to do great work. Um, and doesn't usually affect the gut as much. Um, but there's no downside in terms of your physiology. Okay. And then my other question had to do with, is this like a lifelong um, protocol that one needs to adhere to or? Well, hyper nourishment, yes. I mean, if this is something that can accelerate your body's ability to repair itself and your immune system, it's a wonderful thing to keep on. But pure hyper nourishment, no. So sometimes people think of pure hyper nourishment, like we do in rapid recovery programs, where people are only eating the foods their body uses to repair itself. So lots of smoothies and salads, broccoli dipped in guacamole, whatever they can do to get more of those foods in, right? So that is um, for a limited time for people who are extremely sick or just want to do this as quickly as possible um, until you get to the results. And then you keep the hyper nourishment, whether you want to just keep a blender smoothie a day or you want to keep the salads going, and then you add other cooked plant-based foods. But for those of you who aren't in an emergency situation, just want to add hyper nourishment, then you just add that to a plant-based diet and you can have really great health and energy and still have a pretty, you know, um, pretty good variety of foods, but I'm still, I, I live high raw because I, the energy is fantastic. So I usually do smoothies during the day. And then when I get done here, my nine-year-old usually makes the dinner salad and we have a big salad at dinner. And then sometimes it's just a big salad where he throws like beans and stuff on it. And other times it's a salad where we'll have like a side of potatoes or vegetable soup or something, but the star of the show with the spotlight, that's, that's the, uh, that's the hyper nourishment part of it. And that's what I've taught them. Nourish your cells first, your taste buds second. So, um, you don't have to do it that way, but if you stick with a plant-based diet with at least that 16 ounces or so a day of, of greens and the handful of omega threes and the water intake that I taught you, you're going to keep yourself really resilient and energized and you'll age slower too, which is always fun. Uh, again, thank you so much for that doctor. And now we're going to go to, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm not sure if it's uh, Soman or Simon, welcome. Oh, hang on. I'm going to unmute you. Let's see. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. 
Um, yeah, I've been doing, uh, well, I did your protocol with all your free stuff um, for maybe around six months, um, around 1.5 and 2 pounds of the greens and uh, half to one cup of the omegas. And I started having um, some problems. Um, I had like a uh, incontinence and I had like uh, the liver enzymes were elevated. Uh, what else? The- What are you doing it for? Uh, I have uh, Hashimoto's and Sjogren's. Okay, um, okay. And the estradiol was also like uh, low. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I went to the doctors and they said like it was too much fiber. So. I'm back to whole food plant base. I'm still trying to do um, uh, the salads and um, some omegas, but I don't know if you have any recommendation for me. I started. Did you say uh, you were doing a full? Did you say you're doing a full cup of flax or tea? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the highest I did. Yeah. Yeah, and you had incontinence, what of stool or of urine? But both. Okay. So it sounds like you might've been overdoing it a bit there. I mean, I can tell you for sure that eating this way is going to bring down things like liver enzymes and we've helped people optimize hormonal health. So I don't know if that was something that was just not tested before, or if the, you know, because sometimes people will get a result, but their last test was six months or something before. So they don't know, like the data points don't match, you know what I mean? Versus if you had it like every week or every month, but if you were having trouble getting it all in one, go back to more the minimal side. I mean, I don't eat a cup of seeds a day. You know, um, if you're constipated, use something like the cold pressed flaxseed oil. If you're having diarrhea, stick with the seeds. But it sounds like that might have been the issue. The other stuff, I don't think that's really connected. In fact, I, if I would recommend you do it to reverse the Hashimoto's. So go back to doing it in a way that you feel is more manageable, right? And work your way back up to it again. Um, but you're not going to reverse the Hashimoto's doing it the way you are now. You want to bring those foods back. And if you don't like smoothies, you can always do it in salads. And if you're really struggling, listen, I try to teach it all for free. I spend a lot of time online teaching for free like I am right now, but some people need help. And that's why the rest of the time that I'm not teaching, I'm seeing clients either in wellness consultations or in rapid recovery. So if you're struggling to do it on your own and you need help to get it right, that would be when you make an appointment with me or work with me so I can solve the problems. Cause it's hard for me to know, like I hear a story, but I don't really know everything you were eating on each day and all the other things going on in your life. So I don't really have any other answers for you besides, yes, this works to reverse the conditions you have. And we have to just get it right and work with your gut issues. Uh, again, thank you so, so much. for Yeah. That. I wish I could help more, but that's, you know, it's kind of a black hole. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah, amazing, though, uh, everything you're sharing. Um, let's go over now to Lisa B. Hi, Lisa. Oh, Lisa, I'm going to unmute you, okay? Hang on. Hi, Lisa. Lisa. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm assuming you can hear me. <laughs> yep. You can hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you just fine. Um, thank you. So um, I was following you on your Facebook page and for a while, and what kind of grabbed me was because uh, I have my senior gravis and I'm having an anxiety issue. Is that you had made a post that uh, I was think it was a neuromuscular and it was in your stomach. I forgot exactly the terminology to use, but I was like, okay. And then I that's when I really latched onto it. And so I've been doing the smoothies for about two and a half to three weeks. And one of the questions I have is it is 50% um, kale, 50% spinach, and I'm fine with it. it. tastes great. I do banana and all sorts of things, fruits in there, but um, do I need to mix up the greens or can I just stick with that because it's great? I like it, but I'm not rotating the greens. It's totally fine. You know, consistency matters more than variety. I, I don't go with the whole idea that you need to eat different things every day. Um, first of all, that's not really human, right? Like we eat whatever, if we were eating what was growing in our neighborhood, it'd be the same thing every day. Uh, two, when you're optimizing nourishment, you're going to get more out of that spinach and kale than you would get out of a buffet of things. So that's totally fine. I, I mean, I've been eating the same smoothies for a decade. <laughs> so you find your favorite, you can stick with it. And that's just fine. Thank you so much for that. And let's go now over to Tracy. I will unmute you. Welcome. Hi, Tracy. Hi, thank you. Um, I asked a couple of days ago to somebody else about 
a thyroid nodule. So <clears throat> I was wondering, I'm doing pretty much everything that you're saying. I'm taking like chlorella, spirulina, flaxseed, chia in a smoothie I take to work. I'm doing salads. But have you had any success with shrinking nodules from this Absolutely. kind of diet? Yeah. So it depends on what the nodules are from too, right? Sometimes you can get nodules from hyper or hypothyroid or other things. They usually have to biopsy to find out what they are. But what we want to do, if those nodules are inflammatory, then you're in the right place right now. Just make sure you're also getting iodine. Um, one issue that I have seen that I, I didn't really uh, have a chance to bring up here is that um, people are getting more iodine deficiency than before. And it's because I think of the health movement, because um, iodine was put into sodium a long time ago, because everybody ate salt, and it's an essential nutrient for your brain and for your thyroid. And so everybody always had enough iodine. Well, now people in the health movement either are told not to eat salt, so they stop altogether, or they uh, switch to like sea salt that doesn't have iodine. And then we're getting more thyroid issues. I figured this out a few years ago. I was like, Eureka, it's the iodine. I was very excited when I figured it out. And so um, one, if you're getting that high water intake that I recommend having sodium in your diet is just fine. But if you have a thyroid condition, hypothyroid, um, making sure you get uh, iodine in your diet is going to be really important. So for the general public, usually about 150 micrograms a day, which is about half to three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, um, if it's iodized, or if you have Hashimoto's, they found that 300 was the right amount, but not more because more or too much is toxic as well. If you've got hyperthyroid, often your, do your doctor will tell you not to use it. So listen to your doctor before me, but just make sure that's not part of the issue um, because I've seen that come up more and more, especially in the past, probably three, four years. Um, and that can affect thyroid function. So. Thank you very, very much for that. And uh, let's go now to uh, Christy, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Chris, let's see if we can get you to unmute. I'm going to ask one more time. Hi, Christy. And Hi, I'm here. Thank I you so much, Dr. G. You're my hero. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> I have two issues I'd like your input on, and I also have a thyroid nodule I forgot about, so that was helpful to hear. Um, high blood pressure and blood cancers, any experience with blood cancers, specifically CLL leukemia? Oh, I'm sorry that you're dealing with so much. Uh, and I'm glad that you are going to do uh, what I teach. It's really, really important. I actually um, just started working with a kid yesterday in India who has leukemia and, and he's uh, 10 years old. Um, and he was, you know, he was a picky eater. So his parents just let him have like lots of milk and sugar every day. And they didn't know you know, how it affected them. So looking, I, I just started yesterday, so I don't have a result yet to report. And, and one thing I have to say about the whole cancer issue is that in the U S doctors are not allowed to say that they are treating cancer if they're not using medicines or surgeries or radiation. So I will not say uh, that this is something that you can use for a treatment. What I can say is that the nutrition um, will optimize your immune system's ability to fight back. If you remember seeing the pathway I was teaching um, in terms of the triggers for cancer from the inflammatory foods, as well as that uh, Johns Hopkins that did the study recently that showed cruciferous vegetables blocks replication of cold and COVID viruses. Years ago, did the research that showed that cruciferous vegetables specifically kill cancer cells. So it is still, if you're going to be on a nutrition plan to go along with whatever your medical treatments are, this is the best thing that you can do. And I've worked with people with cancer who did their treatments, whatever they were doing. Some did a lot of treatments, some didn't do them, um, but who did really well in terms of antibody markers, um, and even visible tumors, uh, it was really remarkable. Um, so all of these things go together, right? That when you've got high inflammation, you're gonna be more likely to trigger genes for autoimmune cancer, all of the things. And some of the treatments for one can cause some of the others. So uh, really all you can do is everything you can do, right? So if you're doing pure hypernourishment, that's great. Then work on all the emotional side of being grateful that whatever body you're in is still here. You're winning as long as you're still here, right? That's how I always felt. <laughs> I was like, all right, I got the diagnoses, but I woke up today um, and I'm going to make it a really, really good day. So um, do everything you can to take care of it nutritionally, do whatever you need to med medically. Um, and don't forget to just be glad that you're here at the same time. And if you need more help because of it's complicated, reach out to me and let's figure out a way. Thank you so, so much for that. And let's go now to uh, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Crystal, you there? 
Oh, Crystal, are you there? We can't hear you. Crystal. Oh, no. I am so sorry, Crystal. We're going to move right on now to... Let's go to Kim S. Hi, Kim. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for everything you do. You're such an amazing person. Okay. So really quickly, um, my A1C was slightly elevated. So I started following the Mastering Diabetes, kind of Chef AJ, whole food, plant-based, low-fat diet. Um, And it's great. I went from 150 pounds down to 125. Everything's normal. Except, oh, so the plan, on the plan, I'm doing 15 to 20 grams of fat from nuts and seeds, basically kind of like you know, the items that you recommend. But about three months ago, I started having kind of pain all of a sudden in my hands and swelling almost like arthritis. And my I missed my my last two periods. So I was wondering, is this just too low of fat for me and I need to up it? Or do you have any advice? First of all, congratulations. Um, I can't diagnose the issue for you. Uh, I can't say I don't I don't do the whole like grams of fat and all that kind of stuff. I focus on the hypernourishment side of it. Um, for most people, they can eat nuts and seeds and other things as long as their inflammation is down. But if you're using all of your fats for nuts and seeds and you're not getting your omega threes, that might be the problem. So make sure you're doing that full hypernourishment so that you can get all the healthy fats you need and don't worry about counting your fat numbers. Thank you so, so much for that, uh, Dr. Goldner. And um, folks, I'm sorry, we are up against the clock and we're going to, we're just not able to get to every single question, but we appreciate everybody raising their hand. Obviously, Dr. Goldner shared all of her contact information and her websites. And of course, she's got her books and like, go, go. She wants to help you and she wants to help you directly. Um, Dr. G, oh my gosh. Um, Don't even know where where to begin. You are a blessing. The fact that you took your vulnerabilities and your heart and made this so much bigger than yourself, and nobody would have blamed you if you just thought about yourself. Um, I I really, I'm actually holding back tears right now. Like you are amazing. Thank Thank you you. so much. Um, Thank you for the stand that you are for everybody. It means so much. And the fact that you came here to be at The Real Truth About Health uh, wow. No wonder everybody was talking about you all week until we got you. So um, thank you. I just want to thank you up and down. We don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. But I know I am not the only one that wants to thank you. So I'm going to ask my tech team to unmute our entire audience. Everybody, what do you want to say to Dr. Brooke Goldner? Oh my God.